Welcome back to Carmsden Farm on Farming Simulator 22 for episode 19 with me, Mr. Silly P. Tonight, no, this is not Top Gear. Um, I'm going to carry on straight off the back of the last episode, pretty much. I've done a few little bits here and there. I say a few little bits here and there. Uh, I've finished the harvest here on field three. Uh, we delivered 70,000 litres at the end of the last episode. We got another 50,453 litres. I delivered that as well. So just over 130,000 litres delivered and the money's up. So I'm very happy. We have got rain coming. Don't know when that's going to be. Um, I remembered or realised field two when we harvested that of our sorghum. We took all the sorghum over to the grain mill um, and I repurposed that field. I didn't uh, mulch it. I forgot to mulch. Um, so I was I was down a little bit on yield. I mean, 5%. Not a huge amount, but I was down a little bit. So I thought, you know what, for field uh, three and field six, I am going to do some mulching. I've got the Sepi Multipler. This is a little bit bigger. This one's eight, eight metres, 8.2, something like that. It's a little bit bigger than the sort of the standard in-game one. Not by a huge amount. Um, I've also finished the fertilizing contract over on field 30 and a sowing contract has come up for field 16 the field that we harvested um the last episode or the episode before whichever it was um so i need to put some seed in there i need to complete on that contract actually before i forget to do that let's complete on that one so we'll collect that that's now active they want sorghum in that field um so what i'm going to do is let's start that up and see i don't actually know if i've got any seed not enough to fill it. I need to buy some more seed. We'll get some more seed put in here, shall we? I've lost my little trigger point. Where is it? No. Am I in the way of it? That's weird. It's normally right here. For my filling. Okay, hang on. That's annoying. Oh, would be, wouldn't it? Right there. There we go. Uh, we're going to put 10,000 litres in. That should do us for a while. That's been topped up. So that, we'll have to go over to field 16. We'll get that going. I need to get the mulching going. When the mulching's done, I'm going to be cultivating the fields and then this cedar once it's finished on field 16 we'll come back we'll give it a bit of tlc and then we'll get that onto our fields um here now field three is fine field six we're going to be putting up a building today uh we're going to do the i said about putting in a dryer we're going to be putting in a grass dryer to make hay and then we'll get, I've got a load of fields I can mow, so I'm going to mow a load, we'll get a load in there. Some of the grass I'm going to keep for the sheep, some of the grass is going to go into the dryer to turn it into hay. Like I said, I can do it with a tether, of course I can, and I can collect it, but I want to do something a little bit different. We're going to have to lease a loading wagon again. Um, actually, should I start off? I'll tell you what, I've, now I mentioned this before, about this situation, I don't know if anyone else has noticed it depends if you're having it on ps4 or it's just ps5 problem i don't know or whether it's the game or i'm not sure is i'm doing things and when, like that my um right stick or you know that view it just starts to drop it keeps doing it in menus i'll switch to doing something and all of a sudden the the, the camera just drops and um it's driving me mad but it doesn't do it all the time i'm not quite sure what's causing it it's very peculiar <sighs> Anyway, <laughs> what are you going to do? So, let's drop that down. Get you mulching. Um, and then we'll go... Can't find that. I'll do what I usually do. I'll go around the outside, get all the outsides done, and then we'll. Uh, I'll get that working on its own. This has been fertilised, as has filled six... I was looking at um, there's the, the, those mulching heads that go with the forage harvesters now, um, which are pretty cool. But that would mean leasing a forage harvester to do that. So I thought that's a bit expensive. These actually, I'm going to get some gaps missed here, aren't I? 
Is it? What just happened there? I know there's a bump, but not that bad. That, that small one at the front is rubbish. I'm missing loads of stuff. Should have stuck to what we had before. They seem very peculiar, I'm not sure. Hmm. Okay. I've lost my thread again. Never mind. Oh yeah, expensive. Yeah, that's probably why they're not working properly. Um, I think the front one was about 300, 400 to lease, the back was 2000 something. I thought it was going to be really expensive, but actually, no. Now, by the look of this as well, it does have um, a rear hitch and a PTO bit. I don't know whether or not you could attach a cultivator onto that as well, so you could do the mulching and cultivating at the same time. Potentially, I hadn't even really noticed that when it came out. My cultivator's a bit bigger though, unfortunately. It won't, it won't. I'll end up cultivating bits I haven't mulched yet, and I'll lose the yield bonus for it. So Now, because I'm changing the field state, um, I'm changing it from harvested to mulched, I could run my fertilising you know, straight over again, so I could fertilise right over it. That's going to work like the mowers, isn't it? It's the only problem with having one at the front. Once I've got the outside sorted, I'm sure it will all be fine. That'll be a little bit better, will it? There we go. Yeah, so actually, it might work on with the smaller cultivator. Maybe, I haven't, like I say, I haven't even, definitely even tested it. So, yeah, uh, we'll, get the, we'll get the dryer in. Let's do it again now, look. I have not, I'm not touching the control. I'm not touching that at all, and that's moving that camera angle itself. That's really annoying. I don't know if it's a game mechanic thing. Like I say, I don't have the controls on the way out. It's, I suppose, yeah, I, yeah, I use it every single day, I guess, but then I don't. My PlayStation 4 controllers, I think, I think I only ever owned two or three. And the only reason I bought one of them was because it was, it was a camo, uh, like skin <laughs> and I liked it it wasn't there was anything wrong with my PlayStation controller before it worked perfectly fine I just thought oh I really like the look of that one and then I was gifted one someone sent me a red one which was really cool as well again not because my other was broken when you think the use they get they are yeah they are abused <laughs> when I went to one of the game shows when I was doing the, uh, the FSL commentating we were in Zurich it was in Zurich for the um, game show there and there were uh, companies there I think it was the same in Poland as well where you can have you, you can have a controller custom built and they had all the components and all these different colours and all these, you know, all this amazing stuff um, and you basically just went along and sort of picked all the bits you wanted and they would custom make it even down to your triggers and your, your you know your joysticks and all, everything all custom stuff and they had like, because they had like Mississippi Greens and they had all these, oh amazing, but they were not cheap. I mean like, really, really not cheap. Um, and at that time, I couldn't afford it. So I didn't, but um, yeah, very, very cool. I don't know if they do it with PS, I suppose there must be companies that do it with PS5 controllers. Anyway, I, yeah, you don't need to worry about watching me mulch entire fields. It's just another step that needs to be done. Our wheat is growing nicely, we've built two. Everything is ticking over. Oh, I did put a bridge in. Oh, I meant to say, yeah. Uh, if at some point we get over there, oh, we're going to cut some grass over there and we're going to be putting in the um, the grass dryer. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to find a nice flat spot and I didn't want to put the grass dryer where all the other factories and stuff were. I wanted to put it closer to, well, probably actually where the cows were because if I'm going to pay in there I wanted it to be accessible for making TMR as well so um, that's why I'm going to do it at field 3 and we can just whiz down the hill and I'll show you it's, um, I can't remember what, whose pack it was but it was um, the one the Elm, you know, the Elm Creek ones those green metal bridges it's one of those and it fits in there really nicely um, just takes out that really sharp dip in the bottom 
when I went in there the, the what was the last episode, wasn't it? Right, I'll get the cedar over to field 16, we'll get cracked over there. And then I'm actually thinking about you know what I said about replacing this tractor? I don't know if we need to buy a new tractor. Um, because I'm, I was thinking about the jobs I was doing now and suddenly thought, if, I, if this is mulching and I've got one sowing, I've got the John Deere, I guess. Um, I'm, I needed what well, I need one, yeah, for doing the mowing and then... But why is that not... Come on, turn. Come on, turn. It just doesn't seem... There we go. All these little bits of mist. Right. Now we're good. Right, we're heading to field 16 to get this contract underway for putting sorghum in. If I've remembered to put it in, you've probably just seen, you know I said about hooking up a cultivator or whatever, I suddenly thought, oh, hang on a minute, <laughs> I wonder if you can do that mulch it in a three, like a triangle configuration, rather than the small one front and the butterfly on the back, put them as three, which it worked. And I thought, okay, and it, it actually worked a lot better. It wasn't missing as many bits, um, which was fantastic. However, as soon as I went to set a worker, it wouldn't work. It kept on um, getting to the end of a row and then couldn't work out what to do. So it was weird. It did work better but wouldn't work with a worker, so I put it back how it was before. Put the uh, small one on the front and then the, uh, the butterfly on the back and it's now going up and down. No problem at all. Very peculiar. I don't know. It's what it is. Um, so we'll get this going. Turn that on. Definitely on saw. Good on. Again, double check. Double check everything. Contract field 16. We're in the right place. Sorghum. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Don't want to go wrong. There we go. That's about right. Where am I lined up with? Bottom of that pillar mounted screen. Nope. That's way off. such as just keeping that part of the frame of the door. If I keep that part of the frame of the door lined up with the side of the field, that does keep us pretty much lined up. In lieu of not having uh, ridge markers already in place, if I just line up that side of the door with the edge of the field. We look like we're going alright. Whoa, let's hop out double check we are we're doing perfectly this does sound so good as well another thing I'm thoroughly enjoying about the game and um, I know it did it on FS19 it just seems more pronounced on 22 is the um, the damage and the paint wear and stuff on vehicles and machinery. When I was doing my spraying and I bought the sprayer back it was filthy and I hosed the whole sprayer down and it's like most of it's bare metal. It's like, there we go, there goes the camera again. What is going on? Um, and this is the same, you can see all the wear on it and that's brilliant. I mean I could pay to have it repainted. I like, I like the battle scarring. It looks cool. So Again, I'll whiz round to a few strips around the outside, get this going, um, and then we'll let the uh, let the worker crack on with this. And then I need to make a decision. I need to try and find a tractor with fairly high horsepower that I can use my mowers with, or I could swap out, really, I suppose, for one of these things. 
my John Deere hasn't got enough oomph to pull this sower and I'm not sure if this tractor that I'm using now, the 8, what do I do actually, the 8S, should run the mowers or whether I just want to get another tractor <laughs> where I'm at that point um, where you just think, you know what, is it time for a, for a fourth tractor, do we need one? It does give us the option if we went for something bigger I mean to be fair, the Magnum is pretty big but if we went for something bigger, we've got more options on larger equipment and stuff moving forward. Mm. Maybe. Oh, that camera thing's driving me mad. It seems so much worse today. Oh well. What are you gonna do? I'm going to enjoy this. I've only gone and done it. I've only managed to find it. Now this isn't second hand. I mean technically it is, but it's not from the second hand dealership. This is a used, but new to me, John Deere. We've got an 8960. It's 370 horsepower, and with its used paint, I, I, it was offered to me. I could have had it reconditioned and resprayed, and all, but got it with used paint. 89,000. This cost me 89,300 for a 370 horsepower tractor. It's a bit of a beastie. It's on twins, but this is a fourth tractor, and because it's big with a fair bit of horsepower. We can use this for cultivating, we can use it for seeding, we can use it for doing any of those sorts of jobs. We've got a three-point link on the back. Obviously, there's no attachment on the front, but what I'm going to do now is swap my vehicles around. So I'm going to go and put this over on field 16 for doing the sewing. I'm then going to move the John, not the John Deere, I'm going to move the Massey Ferguson over. Hopefully, that'll be enough on the mulchers to run the mulchers. And then I'm going to move the um, case, the Magnum, and we're going to run the mowers on that. So once I've got that ready and we can go and grab the mowers, we're going to go and put in our our drying building, go and cut some grass. I'd like to say I'm going to need to lease a, a loading wagon to pick it all up, but I can put it all on swath dropping because I don't have to worry about tedding it because it's going to go into the dryer and we'll, we'll grab a load. Like I say, some of the grass will go for sheep, we're going to put that in for feed. Um, all I've got to do now is find the tractor on the field. How far across is it? Huh. Is it moving or not? It is. So as you stop for tea break or something. So yeah, this is I'm really pleased. And I had to look at all different sorts, all different things that were available. Um, though higher horsepower tractors were a lot more expensive. There were some of the sort of medium tractors that went up around this sort of horsepower, but again they got quite expensive. I wasn't overly fussed about whether we had a front three-point link or anything because of the options it gave us. Um, so, yeah, brilliant. We'll add it to the fleet. Why not? We've got, a, we've got our other old John Deere, and I love that. And this thing sounds great and looks great, and it's massive. So what I need to do now is uh, somehow stop him. Get ahead of that. It's um, not going to like it. There we go. Thank you very much, sir. Let's disconnect that. Get out of the way. I don't know what it is about the long front. I love the look of this one. There we go, three-point link, hooked up. It's a new sewing machine. <laughs> yeah, good old one. Excellent. Right, let's swap this over. I will go back to the farm then. I will see you, uh, beacons off. I will see you back over near the cow farm. With the Magnum, get the new building put in. 
Oh, it's bumpy. Oh, lovely. Lovely, and didn't break the bank either. That mulching setup is leaving loads of bits. It's just it's missing bits all over the place. I'm not going to lie, I'm not overly impressed with it. I should have just stuck with the slightly smaller one. I think the what's the smallest standard in game one is a six meter in it. I thought oh, yeah, we'll go a little bit bigger, but no, I'm not, not raving. Right, that's that swapped over. So, this is the corner I'm gonna I'm gonna use part of the field. Like I said, I'm gonna I am gonna use part of the field. Uh, put beacons on. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put it here in the corner. It's fairly flat. We got all this grass from the field we bought in the last episode. Here, we can cut all of that. We can cut all of that. We can get the field next to it. Oh, there's the bridge. Look really fits it works really well so for getting in and out rather than going it was it was a lot deeper in that bottom bit than I thought it was going to be so we can come across the field around there and go out to our tomato sauce production just there and that's worked out really well so now comes the tricky bit is trying to get this positioned so I don't use up too much of the field it's not going to cost me too much, and I shouldn't have a problem with um, uh, leveling on ground and that kind of stuff. So if we go to... is it factories? I assume it would be factories. Um, where is it? Oh, there it is. Look. Grass dryer. Um, it's only 55 grand, which isn't too bad. Although, whoa, that's a much bigger build than I thought it was going to be. Right, uh, mind you, 55424, that's pretty good. I can try and tuck it right into the corner. Like, so tuck it into the corner. That's not too bad, is it? If I do a bit of landscaping around it, let's make it a bit more expensive, isn't it? I'm going to leave that track a little bit. You know what? That's probably. Oh no. No, 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 no. <sighs> That's really annoying. Should have gone further back. Bear with me just a moment. That's better. Always pays to save before you do anything big. <laughs> uh, so, I think what we need to do now is let's go up to our landscaping. Uh, painting first, I think. We'll put in... So circular. Yeah, I'm going to... I'll blend it all in. I, I, I never really know whether... When I'm doing these sorts of things, whether people are interested in, you know, I, I would imagine by now most people kind of have got a way they do their landscaping or I know some people don't touch it. They kind of try and stay away from it. They don't necessarily like doing it. Um, so they don't, you know, I, I'm i trying to kind of, do I, do I add more in to show people that? I'm trying to get a sort of sweep here because obviously we've used a big chunk of the field here but I want this field now to sweep round and kind of come round I don't that's a bit of a weird angle although it does give me some I could put something else on here I guess couldn't I let's sweep across here this is obviously this is costing us money but it's all right this is all part and parcel and we'll take that to there make that a bit smaller and go to the edge same with that so I see the clown down there, look, who, who's using the drone. <laughs> and then what we'll do is we'll put, I'll put grass in over it, then we'll put some gravel bits, we'll put some bits where we want to have our track. I'm not sure really at the moment where I want my track, whether I want to come off of here, 
so we'll come in here to use it and maybe on there then off there maybe mm, maybe we'll have a think about that unfortunately it's, it's drying up <laughs> doing the grass drying tedding and that kind of thing i suppose with a lot of these things now when there are dryers and things available people do still do tedding in fields of course they do but it's like anything with mechanization and you know, people talk about i think that things being better i don't know if it always is you know technology doesn't always make everything better i don't think i'm, I'm not going to go all deep with it on that. Uh, let's go around there and then sweep around i know i'm losing a chunk of the field but that's all right oh my throat man I'm coughing like mad today Yeah, it will look fine in, in, a, in a little while. So, like I say, I, I'm never quite sure how much of it to show, how much of it not to. Actually, you know, this is going to need to be where we collect from. So I think we'll have to... I won't go grass and all of that. A bit bigger. Boom, boom. Always be a little bit careful. Because if you're not looking around behind you, you can end up wiping out. <laughs> you can wipe out loads of stuff that should be there, you know. I say should be, whether you want it there or not. So, tracks. How do I want to do this? I mean, I could put hedges in the front. I could put a couple of trees in. For the time being, I'm going to leave it because I don't, I'm not sure how I want to go with it. Um, now, from here, in front, I think I'm going to go... I've been quite enjoying using the riverbed texture, which gives a nice kind of track. I don't know, I just quite like it. It doesn't always work. And obviously it's not going to work on there, but up to here it will. And once we've got the grass in and around it, we should be fine. He says, with it not working where it should be. It can get frustrating, and I can totally understand why people get annoyed with doing landscaping because it doesn't always go where you want it to but you can often kind of come back around and you can tidy up by putting bits in later on <laughs> he says I, I hope give me five minutes we'll have it's looking we'll have it's looking a bit better <laughs> I really do hope So here's where I'm at now, and of course it starts pouring with rain, which actually is quite fortuitous, really, because the rain's only supposed to be in for about an hour, and then it, and then it should stop. Um, and then, of course, the grass we cut is going to need drying, so it's almost perfect. Oh, I didn't read that. What does that say? The grass is dry, the farmer is hay satisfied. I'm not sure what it means. But yeah, so we put a few bushes. We put in a little bit of, you know, where you might drive in and drive out. Um, I might add some more decorative objects, we might look for some stuff to put in here, but we have got a bit of room around it, so we could, you know, I don't know what we could do, but I've put a tree around the back and a few more bushes, we've put the bit in so we can drive in there or in from here, and we can go around and out this way as well. It's just, you know, just to make it kind of blend in a little bit more, that actually, that actually works really well there, I'm quite happy with that. I suppose what I could have done was gone straight across there looking mm. ah, that's all right we've still got a big chunk of the fields and we've bought more fields and you know i can always buy another one and plow something out or whatever but i quite like that that kind of fits in that corner quite nicely but like i say you know it's always worth um i mean does it fit the map per se not really i mean it, look at the building and the style of it it doesn't match up with these at all you know it's not that kind of rustic old sort of thing, but we're putting new facilities in to do a particular job. So anyway, I'm going to wait for the rain to stop. Um, the mulching actually is probably nearly done on that field now. 
The clouds. Um, and then I'll bring it over and I'll get mulch on here and I think we're a big chunk through actually on that contract. Uh, 92% and then we have the fertilising one that's just popped up on field 13. So I'll, I'll keep rotating my equipment and stuff through doing, um, say my equipment, the farm's equipment through doing contracts. What I'm going to do now is whiz over. I can't, I'm not going to do any mowing until the, until the rain stops. I know I could if I wanted to. We've got the starts of a rainbow. Looks like over there. Um, I know I can, there's nothing stopping me. I know on, on obviously previous seasons versions, you either couldn't or you, you did, but you had to dry it. You had to dry the wet grass before you could then turn it into hay anyway. Um, we're, obviously that's not quite the case now, but just for the sake of some semblance of um, normality, I suppose. Um, yeah, this isn't looking too bad. Like I say, it's missed. There's loads of bits that it's missed. It doesn't seem to be at the ends of rows or anything. It's just little bits here and there. It just seems to not like. I'm not quite sure why. It's five to four. The rain has stopped. Uh, the mulching is now continuing here on field six. Uh, the grass will be wet, so we can use the dryer. I'm going to go and cut a load. Then we'll go and lease ourselves a loading wagon. I suppose at some point we're going to have to buy one, aren't we? We don't use one that often, I suppose. That's why I'm sure I said that last time, didn't I? Engine was already on. Genius. What's going on? It's peculiar. So, I'll start with the field at the side. Might as well, we're right by it. We do have a load. We've got the um, secret meadow. I can go and cut all of that. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. I, I'm, yeah, I'm liking the way it has integrated into the map. I'm not so sure about the building itself, but that's okay. Let's open that out. Let's open that out. I do need to double check as well though. Turn that on. Drop it down. Uh, let's go to uh, that one and that one. What are we on? Top of work mode. We are on swath drop, aren't we? Right, right. Yeah, swath drop. Cool. Turn that on. Drop it down. And that's going to make life so much easier as well. Let's get this done actually now before I do that. Let's turn that back off. And get on with it. I'm not sure what the capacity of the crane dryer is actually. I think I'm probably just going to spend a load of time oh, just... Actually, do I cut everything? I think what I will do is um, cut this field first. We'll go and get a loading wagon. We'll get the grass off of this field and we'll get it into the dryer. So we can at least get the dryer going. I mean, that's kind of the point, isn't it? I've been trying to test it out. Okay. I'm not going right to the wall, I just, I'm just worried about catching the mower. You know how it is. We'll lose a little bit if we do tight turns, but again, not the end of the world. We should be alright. I don't want the loaded wagon to go for. I can't remember what we went for last time we did this. It was a fairly large one, wasn't it? Now, we're not doing silage work this time, so I'm not going to put any silage additive in. There's no point. But what I am going to do, after I've cut all the fields this time, I think I'm going to lime them all. Because I'm pretty sure last time most of my grass fields all said they needed liming. And I didn't do it. I did fertilise some of them, but I didn't lime them. Fertilising contract of field 13 is ongoing. As long as the tractor hasn't stopped, we should be okay. Should get a fair bit off the session. At least then as well, I know I haven't got to worry with regard to hay moving forward, we should have plenty. And again, for the grass for the sheep, we should have plenty. 
that's really just about I, th I think I've used everything I had we got was it 25,000 30,000 litres off that field next door when we cut that last time and I think I've used all of that now so we're about, we're about ready for feeding the sheep anyway so uh, it's not going to hurt I do like the old Commons killer, a really nice mower setup. I like the fact you can have it swath dropping left or right and, and just uh, regular. Brilliant width on it as well. It's the same width as the Corona Big M450, isn't it? Just trying to think. 10 metres, 10.2, something like that. Pretty sure it is. So as I said, I will do this field first, I'll get the rest of this cut, and then we'll, uh, we'll get ourselves, let's have a look actually, before I even do that. Um, we've got a bit of money, we're going to get some money for that contract, I'm sure we're going to get more fertising contracts and things coming up. So, is that up there already? No. Nope. Where is it? Forage wagons. Do I just go for the biggest one? Is that what I used last time? I'm trying to think now. Maybe I did. The Pertinger 46.6, 49.5 or 50. Class Cargos 44. That's quite nice actually. I mean, 49,500 and 50,000. I've got a funny thing I used the Stroutman last time. I'm going to use the Bergman Shuttle this time. It's only 500 litres less isn't it how much is that going to cost me to lease though <laughs> do i want the solid additive tanks or the rest of it new no. leasing six thousand <gasps> yep let's lease it we'll go and get that in a bit so if that was what the lease cost was to why that's come up seven thousand seven oh did i don't change anything did i Whatever. Whatever, I've been stitched up. But this is one of those fields that's quite deceptive, I think, because it's on the slope and because you kind of drive around and it goes down to the wall, you don't really kind of view it. And I was thinking of using it as an orchard as well, using down the hill. You think it was quite steep and it's quite narrow, but it actually it does go a fair old way, so there is a lot more here than you kind of initially think. I initially thought, anyway. It's nice as well being into March that we're now at four o'clock, we've just gone four, four o'clock and it's not getting dark, or not just yet anyway. That was the only frustrating thing during the winter when I was doing anything, it'd get to about now and you'd start losing light. So for doing any work was bad enough anyway, but for recording and making videos, it kind of really cut down the amount of day you had. That's not to say it's not going to get to like half past four and suddenly, suddenly we'll be in twilight. Just thinking actually driving past here, cultivating and seeding, sowing of our own fields, three and six, I think I'll have to do tomorrow now. Uh, unless it stays very light, very late, but I'm gonna, my intention is to crack on and get as much mowing done as I can. Let's turn that on, drop that down. Seems to be picking up all right. We still have a few issues with the last one, but seem to be okay. Any bits I miss I'll come back and pick up. 
So yeah, we should be in a situation now looking at the field. Where are we? Uh, why is it on that? Because we're on that. Uh, no, not that. We want hot spots, soil composition. So it says needs ploughing. I'm not going to plough it. Take that off, that on, that on. So it needs lime. And we've got one fertilising state because we've just cut it. So we come back, we'll cut, we'll fertilise it again. And we'll be good to go. Um, yeah. We, won't, we don't roll it. We're not going to do that. But it is going to need lime. Just looking at the other fields. Oh, that's a point, actually, that I forgot. Let's double check. Field 23. Yeah, field 23, canola. That's not even dark yet. That's still going to be another couple of months till the canola's ready, isn't it? Another month, maybe? I don't know, it's going to be a while. That's almost... Oh, no, just hang on a minute. Field 16, did we finish the contract on that? Why am I going mad? Hang on. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Let's collect that. 49% complete on field 13. Yeah, so this is going to need some lime, and then I'll put some fertilizer down as well. Let's get a full load. I'll do a couple, actually. If I do a couple of full loads, we'll get the grass in, and we'll get it dry in. I was going to say, I, I thought there was going to be more than this. I thought we'd have more in here by this point going round. I suppose because the swaths, they look, because they look really kind of dark, rich green, and they're quite nice sized swaths as well. I just, in my head, thought, oh, there's going to be tons in there. Well, I suppose there is. We haven't done a full sweep round yet, I suppose. Just me, I'm back to, back to that nerdy person I use. I'm really excited to do this. All the productions, when I do ever do any of it, whenever we do a new one, it's, it's that kind of, I can't wait. Let's put the stuff in, I want to get it working, and you know. Ah, oh, I know. Tight enough on there? Yeah, probably. There we go. 49,500 litres. If I go diagonally up the field rather than try and go straight up the field, we should be okay. Put it in. See what happens. Start overloading. Now there's not actually a point is there a point on here? Do we have a or do I just do it from my do it from my tablet remotely? Yeah probably. Let's do it from here. Uh go on to there, right at the very bottom, grass. 49,499 litres in. It's one for one, 1,000 in, it's 1,000 out. Let's activate it. It's on the storing. We've got one litre of hay. I was hoping there'd be a drier sound or something, but. Ah, 
hey. <laughs> What's that? Hey, we're making hay. We're making hay. Doesn't matter. Right, we're going to get the rest of that cleared up. Uh, mulching's nearly done on there. 60% complete on field 13. Again, it's all progress. It's all moving forward in the right direction. Actually, I need to check the sheep. Uh, we're okay for feed and all of that. Sheep pasture. Okay, it's not too bad at the moment. 43,133. I did fill it up with... Uh, oh, it was the chickens I topped up, didn't I? When did I do this? A month ago? Maybe. Um, we've got another full thing of wool, actually. 1,099, so we've got another one we can take over. Oh, that's the other thing I'd completely forgotten about. I've got all that fabric. I'm putting I'm putting all the wool and the um, the cotton bale that we put over there, or the two cotton bales we put over there. We've got four or five pallets of fabric. We need a tailor's. We need to make some clothing, don't we, as well? That was the whole point of doing the fabric, was for that. And then orchard. I'm still... I'm going to look online, actually, do a bit of research to see about orchard placement. Um, whether you can run orchards um, or like vineyards, like orchards, whatever, along a hillside, or whether they are all they do have to go up and down. I'm curious. So if we can go along, maybe we'll do some along. Because I do want to get some. Uh, I think we'll do grapes. We might do grapes. CVP Sauvignon. You know. Something like that. Mr. Silly P. Maldeck. I don't know. So, that, I think, is where I'm going to stop for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you're still enjoying it. If you are, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.